salvage, I'm fine. What do you want to hit with, Arthur? Okay, I'm going to salvage Ben. All right. I mean, that's a good good place to go. Yeah. Right. Start with Rogue One. Dance, oh, Dance with Info. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Well, maybe I'll put my sword on him. You know, I got to keep up the image, right? Yeah. I mean, even though I didn't want to iron the shirt today. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna be good with the mask. Uh, okay, well that's an um, you got you know, she's immune to cast spells. Right, so you really want to show that you're being a good, good boy. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stick with this one. My I'm wife's pretty. On my wife's pretty on it too. Yeah. And uh, she isn't really immunosuppressed or anything, but she's on hydro hydroxychloroquine for something else. Uh huh. They use it for, for like what they it's actually for. Uh, yeah. Her testing or whatever. Oh, I see. Or something. I forget yeah. what they use it for. Yeah. Oh, I see. And that that's just something that. She's on a bunch of shit. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what they said that was going to be good for the for COVID at first? Yeah, uh, one yeah. of the things that and drinking bleach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I just can't get past the taste, no matter what I mix it with. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm uh, guardedly optimistic that we may have turned the corner. Yeah, so am I. I mean, I've been playing three, four nights a week. Uh, yeah. Out, and yeah. Uh, I haven't got sick. So either yeah. I've been incredibly lucky or, yeah, or the, but the vaccine fucking worked for me. <laughs> yeah, you know, or just some people are just less susceptible. I mean, I haven't been, I haven't gotten it either. Yeah, right. But lots of people, like, I know have gotten it, like my neighbors. Yeah. I mean, but everybody that's been vaccinated that I know that got it, it's like they just shrug it off. You know, it's another couple of days and they're done. Right. It's or weeks especially or if you're vaccinated. Yeah, if they're yeah. vaccinated. Those well, I know a lot of people that died, too, because they weren't vaccinated. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it's just, you know, the shot's fucking free. Yeah, I know. If you want to die, go ahead. <laughs> That's pretty, it's Darwinian. Yeah. You know, even if you're, you talk, if you have a, you know, political leanings, yeah. what's but the still, difference? still, yeah. I mean, I don't give a fuck who you vote for, but if you want to kill them, you'll fucking die in needless shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the sound is on, it's a kid show, man. Come on. <laughs> what's the sound on? Sound is on because people fucking stop working. Yeah, exactly. Keep doing it, man. Yeah, keep blessing my sound. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Testing, 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 testing. All right. Testing, testing, testing. Testing, 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 testing. Are we on over here? Oh, no, we're not. No. Testing, 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 testing. Here we go. Now we can hear. Welcome, welcome, welcome all. Episode 99 of the COVID files that started on uh, Sunday, March 22nd. And we started doing a thing really for uh, Seven Mile House at the time. Vanessa Garcia, who was hosting a lot of jazz at that time, said, let's do that up. We'd already done some live streams down there, but it was very informal. And we really didn't know that COVID was going to go on so long, but here we are. Next week will be 100. Very special show next week. A lot of people coming up to play. Ah, uh, let me see. So, number one, this is Black History Month, right? And the reality is that means is Black History Year for jazz musicians, or actually it, what it should be for, for, for musicians, it should be Black Millennia. And why I say that is, you know, like these colonial people who put these history programs together in music schools, they always talk about times in music. So 
if we go to Western classical music, we have like uh, medieval music and that goes for a thousand years because <laughs> they don't research very much. But anyway, they put it in that category. And we go to Renaissance music and it's a couple of hundred years. And then there's Baroque music and that's a, about 150 years. And then classical music, that's about 150 years. They're all kind of overlapping. So nobody says, oh, you're not playing this at this time or something like that, right? And then we have romantic music. That's about another 100 years. And then after that, we have... Uh, Modern and postmodern, which is where we are now, in classical music, of course. But then if we use that category for, uh, for general music, and um, I think it's fair to say in Western culture, for the last 120 years, it's black American music, like across all Western things. This is what took over. Of course, nobody wants to talk about it like that because they don't like... Uh, what is it, the 1619 Project or Revising History? But that's the history of music right now. If you took all of the black music out of all popular musics in Western culture all over the world, not much music there. Probably some really uppity, kind of weird, messed up dance music. Uh, or if it went the route of classical music, nobody would listen to anything. So that's where we are. And uh, so Black History Month, Black History Year, especially for jazz musicians, and black history millennia. And it's very important for us because when we started this, um, let me see, when we started playing at Jeff's place, let me introduce the guys first. This is Modesto Brazania. This is actually the original crew from the backyard. Jeff Saxton had a backyard thing and uh, we all came out to his place to play and very quickly we decided this would be a learning experience for both Jeff a Modesto, am I right? Have you guys learned a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I think they've done amazingly well. I mean, we're, we're going a long way from there. But at the same time, um, Jeff talked to me and he, he said, well, who can we use to make this a great experience? And the first two people who came to mind were the other two people here today. So for our luck, uh, unfortunate for her, but she, uh, Sylvia on the drums, has family here. She was looking after her family, so she stayed in San Jose. We are so grateful uh, to have this world-class musician of the highest level. You know, she played with Joe Henderson when she was a teenager, Clark Terry, all these great people. Of course, I don't read resumes because I don't really drop names. <laughs> anyway, so that's Sylvia Cuenca. And she kicks butt every week. So when all the horn players come in here, they know that, right? You know that, Mo? The horn players out the back, you know that too, right? Yep, see? It's funny about that. All right, on the piano, we have a... Uh, did, you, did you grow up here? No, in Los Angeles. Uh, a man from Los Angeles, but he put that way behind because then he went out to New York, like everybody else, when New York was actually a place that would kick your butt and actually take names and teach you some stuff. A bit different now. But anyway, still good. Keith Saunders, great, great, great New York musician and a real soulful person for me because I can run all sorts of really, what do you call it, nuanced questions about music? And he's there right with me. So, great Keith Saunders. This is the original band from the backyard at Jeff's Place. We started doing that. And um, after the first couple of weeks, we kind of exhausted what I would call the, the local repertoire, or if you want, the, the jazz canon repertoire. That's about six tunes that everybody knows in common now, unfortunately. It's gone downhill a long way. But the reality is, after about two weeks, I thought it was a good thing to go through a whole lot of repertoire. And ever since that, we've been doing the greatest jazz composers, uh, to my knowledge, from the... 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, probably, I mean, we've even played stuff in the, the very recent, because people have written stuff for us. Great musicians wrote stuff and tested it out here, people like Vincent Herring. So it's worth talking about all this stuff because that's how you make things happen, but the reality is that's the only way you can play this music. You know, it really doesn't work out in a little practice room, like by yourself. Really, does it? No, I think it's a social music, basically. So it's important to uh, be social and have social skills so you're not like an alien in the scene.
But anyway, let's get back to the, the job at hand, and that is the fact that this is Black History Month, this is black music. Uh, we take the black music out and uh, in my terms we've got nothing, especially in jazz. This is, black, this is why I traveled uh, across a long way from a paradise to play here for about already living here 32 years. And I've never looked back because I've been mentored by some of the great players, fantastic people. And I've been taken aside a number of times here and there. That's the beauty of the scene. So that's Black History Month. This is black music. Um, we're going to play some of the greats again today. We always do that. And uh, what we normally do, just to give you an insight on this, is we rehearse some tunes. We talk about them during the week. The rehearsal is really brief, like about maybe five minutes or three minutes on each tune. We don't do any more than that. And then we put it together. Um, but we might go off script today, although we do rehearse a lot of stuff. You never know with jazz. The good thing about it, if you can really play, you don't have to work on your own little solos or transcribe the same stuff over and over again. You can actually play. That's beautiful. It's very free like that. Anyway, uh, I want to give a shout out to Charles McPherson. I know you're listening there. You've been a great supporter. On Monday morning, I had a beautiful phone call right early, and it set my week up for a wonderful thing. He does that quite frequently, a couple of times. Um, he, we have played a lot of his music. He is a... Uh, Really, if we're talking about the music of Bop, uh, I don't think there's a better authority, is there? Really. So, we're really at that level here. We love to play. There's always room for improvement, and we've got a bunch of students and actually some really fine musicians out the back. It was nice of them to come. I think there must have been some buzz about this week, huh? Yeah, a lot of talk. Good. All right. See you in a minute.
Thank you. 
Modesto Brezegna. We got another guest in the house tonight. Uh, I think this is, he ca I, I remember we, we did a, a beautiful tribute to Al Molina when he passed away. That was sometime mid last year. Al Molina was a wonderful trumpet player, local trumpet player, and he was, he was out supporting every bit of music. I mean, he was just this wonderful person. He'd played for years and um, unfortunately we lost him in COVID, which it wasn't from COVID, but the, but the reality was he was such a people person hanging out. He supported everybody, all the young musicians. He'd hang out with everybody, the older cats. He grew up under the older cats and he had lots of bands, lots of records. He was also, actually he had a side hustle. He was a great hairdresser and um, I always remember him because he used to sit in and hang out at the dog patch and <laughs> we'd have long, long sections. So Al Molina, we did a beautiful tribute for him um, maybe early last year. Early, and uh, Mike, like 250, almost 300 people came over and everybody jammed. I don't know how many people were here. There's so many musicians. It was a beautiful thing, right? It was pretty much <laughs> all the cats. So, but Mike Olmos came down. He is, he is a, a product of great music. I remember you at that same time coming out to Dogpatch at the same time. And you were kind of beginning the journey professionally at that, right? That's right, right? Pearls, way back then. Yep. So, you know, th th this is how this music works. It's passed on and everything's beautiful. But we got Mike Olmos here, so we've got to get him up. So Mike, come on up, man. Mike Olmos in the house. You know, that has something to do with black history. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, this is a good good tune for black history. You know, really. Yeah, just wait. Just listen to the tune. Mm-hmm. 
I hope I didn't do any damage to the mic. What, what sort of music was that, guys? What, what, uh, what would you classify that as exactly? Hard bop, that's a really good, you're right. So it's not real bebop because it didn't come from that time. Although Sonny was the master of that stuff, right? There's a little bit of history class always in my stuff. It, when I get chatty, anything can happen. <laughs> it's just that's the way it is, you know? I've always been like that. It's an Australian thing. I learned to talk underwater. That's what we do down there. Anyway, uh, I've, I've asked Mo, what, what do you want to play? Because uh, it's great to have these two great trumpet players up here. Also, let me tell you, week 99, that was black history... Millennium, that's a tune by Sonny Rollins called Arrogant, which is Nigeria spelt backwards. There's always something in there because these musicians, they weren't really appreciated for their brilliance, you know. Um, so, um, what are you going to play? Old Valley. Old Valley. Oh, this is a beautiful tune. This is one written by Herbie Hancock. Before that, I just want to pass the thing, like week 99 and uh, week 100 next week. Do you know, guys, that we have had 40 incredible rhythm section players in here in that time? Not just good ones, like, because I'm a kind of a taskmaster on that. I, I really want to play with good players. I don't really like playing if people don't want to learn and play. Am I, am I, am I a little vigorous, Keith? Yes, sir. Do, do, I, do I ask too much of you? No. No, I don't think I do, right? That's, that's what we feel about the music, right? That's right. So it's, it's wonderful when you get people who are committed to this, so much so that they'll put the time in and play the hard stuff continually. None of this is easy. Remember? Tough music, tough love. Please put on your big boy, I'm oh sorry, you know, your grown-up pants maybe. We should say that. I've got to be politically correct to play this music. All right, so this is Aliloquilly Valley. Uh, as I said, 40 rhythm sections. You know how many horn players, the greatest horn players, uh, in, in my book. I mean, I'm a little biased because, you know, I play saxophone. So I'm always very happy when the best saxophone players on the planet come here and play because it makes me lift my game, you know. It's not really a competition. It can't be competitive because competition and art doesn't work. But hell, you've got to play yourself, you right? Yeah, I mean, they're going to have a wrestling hey, match. What about Scully area Mozart? Scully area, yeah, Scully area. <laughs> All right, anyway, this is Aliloquilly Valley.
Uh, that was a low note contest right there. <laughs> That's what I like to see, a low note trumpet contest. We have, we have a room full of musicians, but like the, the reason we do this is actually for like people all over the world. So all my friends in Australia who check us out and in Europe and Japan, they don't always check us out on the day, but like, who's our friend Diane? Diane Robert. Yeah, she, she's probably sitting there with a, every night, she, every Sunday, she puts a glass of wine out, she hit, sits out, and, oh, and, and your other friend, what was it? No, yeah, but Nicole, but, but the she one who, who is the person who posts all that really funny stuff? Lin, is it Lynn? It's hilarious. Veronica? No, 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 I can't remember. It's like, she said, she said it's, you said it was way in your early time of music, you know. So, um, well, like, like, like in, the, in the Bay Area with, like, Smith and all those things. Uh, Lynn, someone. But she does it too. She's always telling us, like, oh, <laughs> give us that. Anyway, look, re really, this is like for people. When, when COVID came along, we had to, you know, we, we all had to readjust. It was a rough time. And uh, for musicians, it was really bad because, you know, we're, we're social creatures. We want to be out playing and doing stuff. And all of a sudden, we're not doing anything. And um, it's turned into something else, but it's not going to stop. Um, at this point, it's unstoppable. Uh, let's play. Let's. Let's, we've got a bunch of musicians that are going to play, so please hang out. And um, it's going to be a jam session, but it's going to be in and out of jams all night. So why don't we play that pretty tune, the one I said? What's it called? Yours is my heart alone? Just as a change of pace. Or morning. Which one do you want to do? Yours. Yeah, so th this is a, a beautiful tune called Yours is my heart alone. And uh, again, I want to emphasize we are in Black History Millennium. Any jazz musician, it's Black History Year, forever. There's no, like, you know, I did a list. I do, I, I'm a list maker's list maker. That's for, from a kid, I used to sail boats, and, and I was able to put lists in my mind and be really good at strategy and all sorts of different stuff. So I was known for that, but I do lists because when you're scholarly, you want to put ranking stuff. So I, I thought about this, you know, we always talk about history the way the musicians or, or the way the historians talk about it, and that means that in the early 1900s, jazz starts, and then the first record is by the original Dixieland Jazz Band. It's a white band from New Orleans. That's, that's the, the reality of it. And from then on, we start looking at the recorded history all the way through, which is good, but then it's not the real history of the development of the music. The real history of the development of the music is all black, at least till not so long ago. So that means that if you start going down names, and I started doing a list, uh, I've got it over there, and I only did this a couple of minutes ago, but I started doing a list of the most important players for the development of the music. And I'm talking about the scholarly stuff. In other words, stuff that happened on the piano, stuff that happened on the bass, stuff that happened on the drums, stuff that happened on the horns, all of this stuff. And you know, I started that list and I thought, the only reason I started is because I saw these lists. You all see these lists on, on the internet and it says, the 10 greatest saxophone players. Aren't they sad? They're always wrong. And then they're always including people who really suck in the top list. And anyway, I went online and I said, yeah, I don't think that guy should be in there. If you're gonna have a white guy there, it's not that guy once. And then some New York guy comes up and says, what do you mean, are you disrespecting the white guys? This is not white jazz lives matter here, right? This is, this is black history millennium. So when you put it in the context of the development of the music, I started writing, man. You know how many developments there were before I started including a white person in jazz? I got to 67. 67 important names of the development of this music. Now, everyone's gonna say, well, what about Benny Goodman? You know, Benny Goodman was a pop star and he's called the King of Swing, but the swing started 10 years before with Fletcher Henderson. You need to get that right. And then he used, he used black writers to get his sound right. And then I think what would have happened, reality, he, he included those black music, the white musicians, or the black musicians, as he said, right at the right time. But like if, if one of those black musicians had got more applause than him, he would have fired them summarily. That's how he worked. Nobody talks about that, literally. I was like, we got to go back and say, well, remember, like in, what about Bix Beiderbecke? Or what about Frankie Trambauer? 
what books did they work from? Work that shit out, please. All right, anyway, enough of that, but like, yeah, 67, and I wasn't even being specific. But I'm a kind of a scholar and a historian, so black history millennium, please. All of you people here who study this music, we know the importance of it. Anyway, we're doing a show for people all over the world, right? People all over the world. Hey, that, Andrew, yeah. Didn't he include the Mexican in that? What's that? He included the Mexican. Yeah, he, he did. But, but he would not let him play clarinet. Really? I can imagine why. The Mexican wanted to do a yeah, clarinet. Right? Yeah, Modesto's father is a, an incredible, was an incredible musician. He passed away way too early. But not, not, I mean, like, I have pretty good ears. He was a very, very serious cat. So he's not joking about that. Benny Goodman let a lot of cats go. Uh, Gene Krupa is the one who let that cat out of the bag. But he's just not the only one. So I'm just trying to put it in a little bit of perspective because it's Black History Month. Not Great White Hope jazz history. So if anybody comes back to me like that, it's not the right time. That's like saying white lives matter. Please don't give me that. You know, we can, we can deal with it next month if you really want. But what I would prefer you to deal with, the best way to deal with everything in music is come up here and play. It's very easy. We can get a quorum of how to play, right? Modesto Brazenia, Sylvia Cuenca, Jeff Saxton, Keith Saunders. Thank you, guys. We're going to play, and then we've got a few people coming up in the next tune because they're getting their horns out now. This is a beautiful tune called Yours Is My Heart Alone. Thank you. 
Look what I see here. You know, I do a lot of stuff here, so this is like a knife. You should never bring a knife to a gunfight, though. And if you're going to blow stuff up, and people blow stuff up a lot, like, you know, they drop bombs. The bombs aren't good because it's not very strategic. It's much better to be surgical about it. Because surgical stuff can go on forever. It can haunt you for the rest of your life. Anyway, that's Yours Is My Heart Alone, a beautiful love song. Uh, we have so many guys here. We're going to bring them up. Uh, how about a round of applause for Todd Dickow? <laughs> Mike Olmos. John Palowicz. And uh, John Capobianco. Now, I, you know, like, I, I work on the stuff here. I break boxes open and all that stuff. That's why that's there. But, but it is interesting because, you know, remember, like, you know, the, the musicians that created this music were very serious about the music. So, like, it's very well noted that Dizzy went after Cab Calloway with a knife. It was a big deal. But what, what is less known is that Don Bias went after Charlie Parker over playing some wrong changes. I mean, that's pretty passionate about this music, right? Same thing, pulled a knife on him, they held him back. What's that? Yeah, oh, he did everything, yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's funny how we deal with the, like, the, 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 the political correctness of the situation today when we're teaching. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to produce politically correct music. So, you know, if, if that's good for you, I just, it just doesn't move me when everybody sounds the same. It doesn't seem to matter how much they do it. They all kind of sound the same. And, well, it's not only that. I mean, that, I, I heard that when I was a kid. I used to think those old guys, those old guys, what are they talking about? But, you know, I learned to ask the right question. Then you learn something about what they're saying. Please ask the right questions. What are we going to play? We shouldn't drink and drive, guys. Uh, <laughs> sing me the melody really quick. I can't listen. <laughs>
Mike Almas. What about that, man? He's going to play at Madrone tonight. If anyone wants to hang out in San Francisco, he's playing there with wonderful musicians. Adam, who, Adam Schulman, who else? Brian Fischler on the drums. We need to support these local acts. We're going to start a session on Monday nights here just up the road at Burlingame uh, Grill, or the Broadway Grill, as it's called here. So stay tuned for that. Um, and we're going to start in something else also in Burlingame Avenue. So a lot of stuff going on, you know. It's good for jazz, right? Everyone needs it. How about Todd Dicko there? Todd. Todd, Todd is with a wonderful band called Charge Particles, and they got an incredible review, man. It was good stuff. Because they're playing the music of Michael Brecker. And uh, wonderful band, and they're local. But again, they're an uh, international act. Uh, at least while we have an international economy. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Well, come on, guys, come on. What, what do you want to play? We also heard John Palowicz out the back. What about John Palowicz? Amazing, amazing player. Oh, you're there, man. So, so let's let's. Uh, well, I guess the 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 real the real stuff would be like a, yeah, blues. All right, good idea.
these guys are tired. We're only going to do one more short one, but d just to finish, but we won't all play on it. I'll just, I want to feature these two guys. Gavin Halloran, who's been coming over a lot of time. The Gav man. And, and this wonderful, wonderful saxophone player, John Palowicz. Monster. But let me, let me go out. Keith Saunders. Keith Saunders. Amazing, amazing, amazing piano player. Jeff Saxton, man, you, you, like, you are working hard and kicking ass now. Keep doing it. How's your fingers doing? Fine. I'm good. How's the back? Oh, you know, you know. Well, you got to work out if you want to play today. That's, that's the truth. Yeah, I know a little bit about that because of my hand, but, you know, <laughs> no big deal. And then, like, literally, Sylvia Cuenca. You know, if you can't play with that, you probably can't play. Uh, and that would be the truth. This is as good as it gets. Sylvia is the thing, like Keith, like all of these cats. So please give a warm round of applause in your living room with your wine to what's going on. We appreciate you. Again, this is... Uh, I don't know what to say, man. Black American Music Millennium. That's what it is. That's it. Black American Music Millennium. It's at least 120 years old now. Please get that right, historians and scholars. Sad. So sad. We can't change it, but in jazz, we all know there is a truth. Because the truth is through music. What's that? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this is what happened. All right, uh, let me see. That's not the evil eye. You know if it was the evil eye. Maybe, maybe we'll do a real book burning next week. I love doing that. You know, they're talking about book burnings these days. And the best books jazz musicians can burn are real books and transcription books. Do you realize that transcription books, the money never goes back to the people they transcribe? Isn't that sad? The intellectual property, by and large, is the people who played the stuff. But... I don't see people kicking that stuff back. The thing is, though, Bird didn't go through those transcription books. Coltrane didn't go through those transcription books. We can keep adding the names of the masters. But they didn't exist yet. They didn't exist yet, right? They had to transcribe the shit themselves. They didn't transcribe. The whole thing, man, it's like you missed the point. They don't transcribe. They were around the music. Most of them couldn't, record, couldn't afford record players. You think they came up with all that privilege? Shall we start talking about tuners? You know, electro electronic tuners, they were invented by the Germans in the 30s. Nazi Germany. Interesting thing, because people talk about tuning and using tuners. Ah. A very white tuning system evolved. Luckily, I got a really early one when I was being very scholarly. I found this tuner. And I found out that, like, this tuner worked with Jackie McLean. And it worked with John Coltrane. And it worked with Cannonball Adderley. And it worked with Charlie Parker. And it worked with Phil Woods. And it worked with Charles McPherson. And it worked with a whole bunch of people. And so when I play into that tuner, you know what? It's always green and golden. Seems like it understands what the soul of the music is. Of course, if you use the tuner the wrong way, then you look at it and it tells you when you're in tune. <laughs> Funny how that works. Let's get that right, people. All those people out there. Uh, this is a master class. I do master classes here, as you might have seen. I've got so many hours of master classes with the best guy. You know, I've got a master class on jazz competitions. Because years ago, I was in a competition. And then I decided... Well, I'd really like to interview all the judges about the competition. Because I always had a problem with the competition. It's like, I was told by a very famous concert pianist once that he said that, um, he said that Bartok said that competitions are for horses. Well, I know competitions because I used to race cars. That's a real competition. Or maybe race boats. Or well, then if you want to, you can sit down and play chess or golf. There's lots of things where there's a winner. Arts and competitions don't really work. But it's great to hear it from the words of the mouth of the people who actually had to judge a competition. And then you see all the politics and their real views on who was playing what. 
All coming. I got lots of stuff. It's beautiful, man. You're going to love my master classes. All right, guys. Sylvia Cuenca, Jeff Saxon. <laughs> Keith Saunders. John Palowicz is going to play. Gavin Halloran, they've got something worked out. If, if some other guys want to play really short, but we've, these guys have been working hard, so...
John Palowicz, Gavin Halloran. What's your name, sorry, man? Ryan? Ryan Trivio on the bass. What's that? Trujillo. Trujillo. Sorry, man. Um, we, we, we just met. Like he said, I'm leaving. It's nice to see us. Like, what do you do? I said, I play bass. Do you know this tune? Yeah, I know the tune. You should have told me earlier, man. He needed a pinch hitter. Sylvie needs one too, right? But the thing is, she didn't give up. She ain't wimpy. Yeah. Grown up pants. We need grown up pants. Please. Please do that. Sylvia Cuenca, Keith Saunders, thank you so much. Volume 100. We have Nina in the crowd tonight. Nina from the Cafe Stritch. Oh, I got a great story about Cafe Stritch. I won't tell it now. But there was a great jam session down there a while ago. Oh, we could talk about that. No, I won't. It's okay. The rest of the world is talking about it anyway. That's the beautiful thing. Cafe Stritch was a wonderful club in, uh, in uh, San Jose. Unfortunately, I don't think it's coming back. Uh, thanks so much, people. L we love you. We'll be back for week 100. And check out my Masterclass series. I have so much Masterclass stuff to come out. Like, it's 30-plus years in the making for me. I've been doing this stuff for years. I put out a teaser last week. I'll put out another teaser, but like it's literally hours and hours with the undisputed masters. Well, for black American music. Black history millennium. We need the help. 
Hey guys, having fun out the back? A lot of people here. It's great to see you all. Thank you so much for turning up. We love you so much.